Imagine living in a world where based on your gender, you could no longer go to school. Something you had no control over now prevents you from a real shot at a future. Women globally have struggled with the rights to educate, with getting rights to education. In recent years, education has seemingly become a privilege that many cannot partake in. Many are forced to leave school based on certain political and cultural norms, and um, many just believe that women do not deserve the same rights as men, therefore they do not deserve the right to education. I'm qualified to speak on this as I've conducted research on the issue, and I also worked with a club in high school that worked with organizations that were tailored towards um, women's rights to education. So my thesis statement is that um, the U.S. government, um, the involvement of the U.S. government will change the uh, attitude toward, of the world towards this um, issue in particular as we are considered leaders and if we show that this issue is important then um, many in the world will follow because it will spark some sort of debate or top, uh, yeah, debate. So as many as 130 million girls are currently unenrolled in school and many women, specifically in Asia and Africa, are prevented from going to school because of political issues and cultural um, norms that um, basically say that women are not worthy of an education. Um, so for example, in sub-Saharan Africa, as many as 15 million girls are not are never gonna set foot in a, um, in a classroom. And this is a big issue because um, this, um, these cultural values trap many, many girls into this idea that they do not deserve an education. Their only purpose in life is to become a good wife and a good mother. Therefore, they do not need to be educated. They just need to become good housewives. And yeah. So um, if you are one of the few um, in that particular um, area who are allowed to go to school past primary school and um, into college, um, it's very important that you don't take that for granted. Many of those women don't actually, just because they are they know how hard they had to work to get there as well as how much they have to sacrifice um, to get there. So moral of the story is that women's education is very, very important. Um, and it's something that many of us don't even have to think about. So currently in the United States, not much is being done about this issue. Um, although in 2015, Michelle and Barack Obama uh, founded the initiative Let Girls Learn, which focused on providing resources and tools for girls um, globally to get an access to education. Um, the current administration, uh, the Trump administration, has not really done anything with that initiative. When um, Trump first took office, he there was a rumor that went around that said that he would get rid of this initiative. However, his um, representatives from that uh, administration said that he uh, planned to keep it in place. And that has been true. And the issue with that is that it has been untouched since the Obamas left office. Not much has been said or done with that organization and it's quickly losing um, its popularity and that's really dangerous because organizations like this give so many women the voices they don't have to um, speak their mind on certain issues or get the resources they need on this issue. Um, many women who cannot speak on this um, are being silenced all over again and in order to move forward um, there needs to be attention brought to this organization. Another organization that's named um, CEDA or the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women is an organization that has created international laws that protect women's rights to education. Um, two laws in particular um, highlight that women should have the same quality of education and the same access to programs of continuing education, such as literary programs and whatnot. 
Um, and these laws should be implemented um, globally. However, there are still many countries who ignore these laws and um, that believe that women still should not have rights to education regardless of what organizations say, what um, many of the citizens say. Um, just based on like political climates or cultural norms, many countries still don't believe that women should have the right to education. Um, so one case study that I looked into was of a woman named Yeshi, and it was about her journey um, being uneducated and a mother. So essentially, she left school at the age of 13 and raised three children. Um, and five, just five years after that, she found herself divorced and she had to support her family. And she was saying how difficult it was for her to transition and how unhappy she was just because she didn't know necessarily how to support herself or even her family or even herself. So it was very difficult for her to transition from like a, a good, how, good housewife to a woman who had to independently um, provide for herself and her family. So she basically just highlighted the fact that education is very important to her now, even though she doesn't herself have a full education. She wants her daughter to f go and finish school and be knowledgeable because knowledge in her opinion is power. And if her daughter has the power to make certain choices that will dictate her future, then she wants her daughter to have that. Um, she believes that um, her daughter can make smarter choices than her and she can meet better people than her. And overall, just edu her daughter's education was very important to her. So she worked with an organization called C-H-A-D-E-T or CHADET. I don't know. Um, it's an organization that aids girls um, in staying in school and provides them with um, the resources and the people to um, help them successfully invest into their education as well as um, learn how to stay in school and invest in their future. And yes, she was saying how without this education, her daughter, as well as herself, may not have gotten far as, um, yes, she never went through this, so she wouldn't have known what to do. So she's glad that an organization like this exists. And the reason organizations like this are so important is because again, they offer the necessary tools and resources many women globally just do not have at their disposal, like some of the um, more developed countries do, like how we do in America. Um, people, uh, just like the general public and even governments um, need to address organizations like this because it's clearly changing so many people's lives, changing millions of lives every minute. So um, when organizations like this lose the momentum they have in um, popularity or knowledge of the public, um, then it loses its power and its ability to help people actually gain something from this help that they provide. Um, so there are two activists that I do want to highlight, one being um, a woman named Malala. She is 20 years old now, but she ha is very impactful, um, in my opinion. She is the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner. She won it at age 18, I believe, so two years ago. And um, she began her work actually at the age of 11, where she um, fought for women's education in Pakistan. Um, however, she had pressure from the Taliban um, telling her to back down, um, that women don't have a right to education, you need to stop. But she refused, and they actually tried, the Taliban actually tried to assassinate her. But um, she survived and recovered and let them know that she was here to stay and that she would continue to voice her opinions and she currently is now um, at Oxford University. Oxford University, um, when she won her Nobel Peace Prize, offered her a full scholarship. So she's continuing to make a mark on the world and she even has her own fund called the Malala Fund and it just aids um, girls globally for girls' education and their rights to education. 
There's also an author named Chimamanda Ngozi um, Adichie, and she writes many feminist-inspired books, um, one being one of her very famous ones, We Should All Be Feminists, which um, actually has excerpts in a Beyonce song. And um, it highlights just her experiences with sexism and inequality in her home country of Nigeria. Um, she also wrote a book that was very famous called Americana, and it was dedicated to her daughter. Um, and it basically just highlighted her journey about raising a, a girl in such a gendered world. And overall, she just wanted to encourage her daughter to be herself and to not let any man belittle or demean her just because she's a girl and that she has every right to be whatever she wants to be and she can be capable of anything um, just because she's a girl does not limit her to anything. And she also, um, this author in particular, hosted a TED Talk um, in 2009, which um, spoke about the dangers of one-sided stories. And basically, the moral of it was that one-sided stories create stereotypes, and the issue with stereotypes is that they're often wrong or untrue. Um, only one perspective is heard, and um, there's then a whole other side to a situation that is unheard. Therefore, um, one's perspective may shadow another's story or experience therefore we should listen to both sides before we make any judgments and although this um particular ted talk was geared more towards racism um this can be applied to women's educational issues because if we listen to those who believe that women are not worthy of um uh, uh basic rights basic human rights or education, um, then we start to believe that, oh, these issues aren't as important as some other stuff. Therefore, um, people begin to believe that this issue may not be as important as it actually is, which is very dangerous because, again, millions of women are being silenced and um, being forced out of a basic human right to education. And one point that I do want to make before I close is that powerful activists um, use their voice regardless of how powerless they feel. Um, one's voice can hold more power than they think. So, and all it takes is one voice or one opinion to set a spark, to um, spark a debate, a conversation, something. So even if you don't feel like you have much impact, please voice your opinion because you will change the world. That's how many issues get resolved when somebody voices speaks up and voices their opinions, especially for those who seemingly can't talk on these issues because they've been silenced or ignored. So in conclusion, um, women's rights to education are, they seem basic enough. Um, women do have a right to education regardless of political climate or social background income level, etc. You know, um, change has to happen now. There are so many women who are silenced because of very ridiculous, in my opinion, um, viewpoints or ways of life. Um, unfortunately, uh, issues like this um, in the past have um, seemingly been um, changed based on the involvement of certain powerful figures such as politicians. However, in recent years, it's become, I've become more hopeful that um, even regular people like myself can voice my opinion and um, it sparks a debate that goes much higher than I thought it would. Um, but the involvement of politicians is very important because it works, um, these are the politicians who um, work closely with organizations for basic human rights or rights for anyone um, and it can implement a change a change of some sort so um, for example if the White House was to publicly support a women's rights edu rights to education organization um, then perhaps citizens will begin to believe oh this is an important issue oh it needs to be talked about or um, countries um, will start to believe the same thing and that they also need to follow in the footsteps of um, the United States. So I do believe that our government does have um, the power to change um, certain 
opinions on this an issue like this therefore we need to become more involved and actually voice our opinions or a certain sort of dominance on the issue I guess that was kind of the wrong word but um, essentially I'm trying to say that um, we are a powerful enough nation to where what our actions um, have impact for decades and decades so if we do voice our opinion on this issue it could potentially change the lives of millions of millions and millions of girls worldwide. Um, so thank you so much for watching and have a good night.